This video tracks what is now the site of Norwich City's Carrow Road Stadium through time. We'll begin by looking at changes on maps before looking at photos through the years. In this map from the 1880s, the eventual site of the stadium would be where the word Malt House is printed. Carrow Road itself is a straight line at this time, behind what is now the South Stand, and it joins with an earlier Carrow Bridge to the east of the current one. By 1912, Carrow Road still follows a straight line, and we now see a reference to Carrow Clubhouse for Coleman's employees. This was converted from the Malt House sometime between 1907 and 1911. In this 1926 map, the route of Carrow Road has changed to meet a new Carrow Bridge built in 1923, and we get the first mention of a football ground. This was a Bolton and Paul sports ground leased from Coleman's. It was bought by Norwich City Football Club on the 1st of June 1935 on a 20-year lease. By 1938, two stands are shown on this map, the main seated stand in yellow and the Barclay, built in 1937. And by this 1946 map, the football stadium as we know it today is taking shape. Let's retrace those steps with some photos. The Mould House, dating from 1824, was behind the original South Stand. On the left was the Master's House, followed by two furnaces and a long germination room. By the time of this photo, it had been converted to the Carrow Clubhouse for Coleman's employees. We mentioned Carrow Road being a straight line, and here it is in the floods of 1912. You might just be able to make out the Carrow Clubhouse in the distance. The South Stand and the stadium itself would develop on the right-hand side of this road. The creation of a new Carrow Bridge in 1923 would allow a relocated Carrow Road to form the perimeter of Bolton and Paul's sports ground, seen here from above in 1932. The existence of trees indicates this is looking towards what would become the South Stand. This 1934 photo shows the sports ground fenced off from Carrow Road, looking at what would now be the Barclay. Norwich City Football Club had been based at the Nest on Rosary Road between 1908 and 1935, but in 1935 the FA contacted the club saying the Nest was unsuitable to hold large crowds. On the 31st of May 1935 the club announced it was going to lease the site at Carrow Road. Work began on June the 11th and was completed in just 82 days and was described as the 8th wonder of the world. The first football league match was played there on August 31st 1935 with Norwich beating West Ham 4-3. This is Mr Russell Coleman carrying out the official opening at the game. This picture of the River End was taken on the 14th of September 1935. This aerial view from the 1940s shows the main stand and the Barclay, the bank which formed the River End, with the South Stand being partly hidden by trees, but visible here in this photo from 1949 taken from the main stand looking across at the South Stand. Note the half-time scoreboard in the corner. Half-time scores would be displayed here and linked to letters in the programme. This photo, from the same era, is looking at the main stand. Into the 1950s now and floodlights were installed in 1956 at a cost of £9,000 which nearly sent the club into bankruptcy, saved by the business acumen of Geoffrey Watling and a famous FA Cup run in 1958-59 including a 3-0 win against Manchester United. Here are people queuing to get tickets for that game and here's a photo of the main stand during the game. The cover of the programme for that match shows the stadium in the late 1950s. This is a view from the south stand looking towards the river end in the 1960s. The advert is for Bonds, which would become John Lewis. In the 1966-7 FA Cup, Norwich won 2-1 at Manchester United and played Sheffield Wednesday at Carrow Road in the next round. The Sheffield Wednesday game saw early signs of hooliganism, which would change the face of Carrow Road over subsequent decades. This is the River End in the 1970s, still the original bank 
covering rubble brought from the nest in 1935 and this is the rear view of the river end at that time. Hooliganism was becoming a major concern. These photos showing the Barclay after a visit by Manchester United in 1977. The initial result would be segregation of fans. In 1979 the River End was replaced with a two-tier stand with seating in the upper part and standing at the bottom. In 1984 the main stand was destroyed by fire after a heater was left on following a reserves match. It was replaced by the city stand in 1987 and this was the aerial view of the stadium at that time. The 1989 Hillsborough Stadium disaster would lead to first and second tier grounds becoming all-seater stadiums. Here are seats being installed in the south stand. Unfortunately, for some bizarre reason, they were red and blue. Here's another aerial shot from that era. Remember the former maltings that became the Carrow Clubhouse in the early 20th century? Here's that building in 2001, having most recently been used as storage for the football club. You can see a floodlight pile on behind it. The former clubhouse was demolished to allow the redevelopment of the South Stand, initially named the Gerald Stand. Here is a further aerial shot showing that development. From the old to the new, that's the story of Carrow Road. Thanks very much for watching.